We'll start with uh, the Rose, Rose Quad Journal cover and we'll uh, describe it some and then we'll work into having a meditation and then we'll go into the, the uh, presentation uh, proper or the full part of the presentation. I know, I know many of you have been uh, looking at the uh, new volume of the Rose Quad Journal, volume 15 for this year, 2021. We've got the address to the uh, uh, journal at the bottom. Uh, www.rosequadjournal.org. Uh, later on, we'll be uh, post. Karen will be posting some resources for you in the group chat uh, before we close for today. Uh, so various things that I've mentioned, uh, you can follow up with uh, more viewing and uh, reading. We're going to take a closer look in at the uh, at the painting, and it's quite befitting as uh, Grandmaster Julie Scott observed that in choosing this for the front cover, that this is a, a work of art on there called The Cosmic Keyboard by Nica Mendes Gomez, who is a remarkable artist and beloved uh, Rosicrucian. In fact, our presentation today, The Mystical Art of Nica Mendes Gomez, uh, is going to um, feature, you know, who, who's more about who he was, uh, where did he come from, what led him to do these very mystical uh, uh, paintings and some of his earlier paintings in his life that you may, may not be as familiar with, we'll describe those. And we'll look at his mission in life overall. While it's a painting about a particular uh, Rosicrucian mystic, you can also think about the presentation in terms of your, your own life path, your own life trajectory and mission. It's befitting that this image of the cosmic keyboard would be on the front cover of the Rose Quad Journal because it's a transdisciplinary journal that's integrating knowledge from various uh, uh, disciplines and facts. Sees the underlying unity of the one of the one truth. And it's a very progressive element, and it's it's part of the regeneration of humanity to see things uh, and understand things um, not in isolation, but uh, truly for something to be known, it must be known in its relationship to the, to the whole. And the Rose Quad Journal and the Rose Quad Teachings help us with that. Let's zoom in a little bit more on this wonderful work of art, which I've shown uh, in some earlier um, telecon uh, teleconference. You'll see in it lots of different things in it. I'll give you a resource later that gives more description of this particular painting. One thing that's very special to see, and this will prepare us for our meditation, you see the, the keyboard here the cosmic keyboard, a very important concept of the Rosicrucians. You can think of yourself as you develop as a mystic, as increasingly becoming a greater and greater musician for the mastery of life, knowing the right keys to press at the right time for to have different phenomena uh, manifest or direct different phenomena. Um, <clears throat> the rates of vibration, the cycles per seconds of hertz, increase, 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 increase uh, tremendously. It's known to have a 144 uh, octaves. And we know from our studies in science, you know, radio waves and various types of gamma waves and so forth are discovering further and further higher and higher rates of vibrations and also phenomena with lower and lower rates of vibration. You can think of ourselves as a sea in a sea of vibration, which in a way is depicted, depicted here. We see the earth, uh, which is the temple of the earth, but we also see the temple of the human. Uh, in the uh, in the pentagram, rising up into the cosmic, so, and the dynamic motions and actions here of the cosmos. If you look closely, you'll see the twelve signs of the, the zodiac to give us a sense of the great celestial motions. You know, last time I talked about the different types of music, going from the music of the body, harmonious relations of its parts to the whole with our vital organs, our sound from our voice and instruments, and also the uh, <clears throat> the music of the world that's de depicted here through the celestial bodies, but also the divine music that we attune with when we move to the center of the cosmic, uh, which gives rise to all these other forms of music. You know, uh, Nicomendes Gomez's paintings, they come from his deep mystical experience uh, as a Rosicrucian. And when you look at them, you start to pick up on that deep experience that he has. In a way, it's a wonderful service that he gave to us. I do recommend his paintings for meditation and reflection. You've had some time to look at this wonderful work of art. Let's in a way live it by uh, tuning with the celestial sanctum. Um, to do that, I wanna mention a few more things about it to give you some sense of the structure of it. And as you contemplate this work, 
There's a deeper underlying structure. You'll see Nuka Mendes Gomez would often do preparatory sketches as he did here. And uh, you'll notice uh, that one commentator on the work and from the, one of the references I'll give you on a, an exhibit of Nuka Mendes Gomez uh, shows some of the key lines in geometry. Geometry is being applied in a sacred way here as well as the sacred number, uh, such as the number five associated with the human, the microcosm. You'll notice that there's particular applications of the triangle, but also in a way a cosmic egg, as well as, as well as circles. And there's these great rays coming down. These are very detailed works that he did. You would have to do extensive planning to make sure that you fit everything in um, to the uh, panel correctly. So there was a lot of plan planning. You know, art is often thought of something as very free flowing and creative, and it has that aspect to it. But much of our work has to be done in a very careful, planned, uh, highly, highly rational, rational way um, to get everything to work and be laid out the way it came. This would have come from a vision and mystical experience of Nicomendes Gomez that then he would then manifest. So in attuning with the cosmic, he would then emulate it, just as we're called to do in our own life, in our own way. One may not do it through necessarily through the medium of painting, but it may be through sciences or culinary arts or personal relations or whatever it is. This is what uh, Nicomendes can inspire us to do. And in terms of attuning with the cosmic, he would then emulate it in various ways in his life, including these inspiring works of art. So now that we've had a chance to uh, look some more at the cosmic keyboard, let us keep it in mind that we're going to follow our ascent from the earth up into the cosmic, which in, in the center of the cosmos and then encompass all. So you may wanna take a moment at this time to close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. It can be neutral breaths, neither holding the inhalation or the exhalation. And just enjoy the rhythm of the breath. Just like in Nicomendes Gomez's painting, the cosmic keyboard. Our breath is part of the cosmic keyboard. It's a rhythmic action, it's a vibrational action. in harmony with all that's on the cosmic keyboard, particularly those that match in the higher octaves. Our breath and all the actions of our vital organs, which just forms the music of the body, help with our attunement and affinity with all the other great rhythms and dynamic actions in the universe. Part of the wisdom of the temple of the body is that as we breathe out, especially as our breath out is stretched out, that helps activate the vagus nerve in our body, which causes a relaxation response. But also because we're doing this meditation in a highly spiritualized way, associated with that relaxation will be a coming into a deeper attunement with the cosmic. And this will happen very naturally as we ideate on the cosmic. And Rosicrucians use the cosmic to mean all natural spiritual laws in the cosmos. And also the divine intelligence back of the cosmos, guiding it and helping give rise to it. Now, as you enjoy and are rejuvenated by these deep breaths, let us begin to descend to the heights of the celestial sanctum. You could think of it like that high center point in the painting, the cosmic keyboard. Let us say together, may the divine essence of the cosmic infuse my being and cleanse me of all impurities of mind and body that I may attune with the the celestial sanctum and pureness and worthiness. So be it in truth, so mote it be. Now let us begin our ascent, rising up from the room we are and where we're seated, we're lying down. Rising up over the building. 
and going up faster and faster up over the city. Even though we're moving fast, we'll do this in a sense with a sense of deep calm. We're moving from the finite plane to the infinite plane. And as we increasingly attune with the cosmic, we'll do this with increasing ease and exhilaration. As you look down on the city below, radiate love and well being to all the shared inhabitants there and rise up higher over the province of, or state that you live in. Taking in the beauties of looking down on the earth and the exhilaration of rising up higher and higher. With this physical ascent suggests the celestial ascent. Now rise up higher and higher and look over the country where you reside. And move up faster and faster. Join the exhilaration of the ascent. And see the continent where you live. Take in the great landforms and the bodies of water. the oceans and rise up faster and faster and take in the hemisphere where you're living. And ultimately the beautiful blue jewel of the earth, the great sphere or more accurately the blade spheroid, slight bulge at the equator. And radiate love and well-being to all creatures and sentient beings living on earth. The great temple of the earth where it is our home our place to learn all the natural and spiritual laws and fulfill our mission in life and service. And continue to rise up higher and higher and take in the solar system and its great system in order and see the wonderful rings of Saturn and the redness of Mars, and the large planet Jupiter. And see the great fiery ball of the sun, our local star and can you rise up higher and higher use great inner force but do it with ease because we're now attuning with the infinite plane transcending space time and start to take in the myriad stellar phenomena see stars see quasars supernovae binary stars, quasars, even pass by and even through black holes as we travel faster than light. Dark descents are even greater home, that of the Milky Way, a great spiraling galaxy. And our solar system is that one great arm of that spir spiraling galaxy. As we pass by the myriad stars, pass right out of the great arm of the Milky Way galaxy we call our home and start to take in, looking back at the Milky Way gallery and view its beautiful radial symmetry. Part of the application of sacred number and geometry in the cosmos. And now take in other spiraling galaxies and other galaxies and even nebulae. Move faster and faster. Enjoy the great system and harmony already of the cosmos. Give it everything you've got inwardly. Now is not the time to be passive. When we reach the center of the cosmos, we'll be passive and dwell in silence, but keep rising faster and faster. Enjoy the great beauty of the cosmos which you mirror as a microcosm of a co cos macrocosm. Keep rising up faster and faster and start to sense the great revolving motion of the cosmos itself about a great cosmic axis sense all the galaxies and nebulae and the superclusters of galaxies 
revolving about this great axis. I move faster and faster, closer and closer to that axis, gradually come to its mid, mid point. And as you get close to it, come and settle at that midpoint of the cosmic axis at the heart and center of the cosmos. And picture there your celestial sanctum. It may be an inspiring temple, maybe an inspiring place in nature or some other place of great and inspiring import to you. And take your seat there. You'll find others of like mind, other students on the mystical path and Rosicrucians. Some of you may wish to picture beautiful stained glass windows there with mystical symbolism. There may be sights and sounds and smells such as incense. And there may be a convocation of the Rosicrucian order occurring there with the imperator of our order with the Grand Masters. But take some time to fill it in with the senses and then move deeper within once you've filled in and activated the outer nature. And if you find your mind wandering any time, just without judgment, just lovingly and gently, bring it back to visualizing your celestial sanctum. And you may find it helpful to concentrate on your breath once you're well settled in and, and well visualized your cosmic and celestial sanctum. And when you're ready, let us dwell there in profound peace. Now, Friders and Soros and participants, as part of our attunement with the celestial sanctum, let us include our meditation, the work of the silent council of the Rosicrucian or Anwark. All those who've petitioned the Council of Solace for metaphysical aid and healing, let us radiate love and well being to them. And if you're associated with an affiliate body of the Rosicrucian order that has a metaphysical aid list, let us radiate love and well-being to them as well on that list. And to all frontline workers in the health field and all those in need throughout the cosmos, all sentient beings in need, let us radiate love and well-being to them. Just let it flow from your heart and your mind like those great rays of light in the Nicomendes Gomez painting. Just let it radiate out from you. Just let it flow. At a certain point, I think you'll feel that it starts to get received and the, the radiation, the radiating of love continues without you having to so much explicitly concentrate on it. When that starts to happen, just to continue to dwell in peace profound as the love and well-being continues to radiate from you. I think you'll find through the law of cosmic attunement and the law of service that you'll find that a great tonic effect of the cosmic essence of the vital life force starts to infuse your being and intensify. 
for assisting the healing of others. We heal ourselves, we make ourselves whole. Now, before we begin our descent from the heights of celestial sanctum, we'll formally conclude this period of work and worship and radiation of love and well-being through the work of the silent council in conjunction with the council of souls by saying, so be it in truth, so mote it be. It pleases the cosmic, it is done. And now before we begin our descent from the heights of celestial sanctum, let us dwell a little more the stillness, the center of our being, the center of the cosmos. Experiencing what Rosicrucians refer to as peace profound. The most profound peace that can be experienced. Now let us begin our descent from the heights of the celestial sanctum with a prayer of thanks and gratitude on our lips, for this opportunity to be of service and the privilege of being able to tune with, with the celestial sanctum and further realize cosmic consciousness. Thankful for the assistance of Nicomendez Gomez in his inspiring esoteric painting, the Cosmic Keyboard. This beginner descent past the myriad superclusters of galaxies, galaxies and nebulae, the quasars, the pulsars, the binary stars, the black holes. spectacular beauty of the cosmos. We'll come back to the great spiraling galaxy of the Milky Way and back in one of the major arms of the galaxy. Back to the solar system. See the great fiery ball of the sun and then the beautiful blue jewel of the earth come back to the hemisphere where you reside and the continent and the country, the state or province, the city, and then your home back in the room where you're seated. And before we conclude, let us say together, May the God of my heart sanctify this attunement of self with the celestial sanctum. So be it in truth, so mote it be. And when you're ready, you can use to open your eyes and stretch and we'll continue with the work and worship of the day. Thank you. Now, continue our presentation, The Mystical Art of Nicomendes Gomez. I want to show you another <clears throat> front, front cover. Uh, 
I wanted to show you another front cover. In this, in this case, the Rosa Cruz a magazine that's associated with the uh, Spanish Grand Lodge of the Rosicrucian Order, Amort. It's a parallel presentation to the Rosicrucian Digest that you're familiar with through the Grand Lodge of uh, this English language jurisdiction. Nicomendez Gomez, the full name Nicomendez Gomez Sanchez, was born in November 16, 1903 in Cartagena, Spain. And he passed through the transition as the Rosicrucians say, he passed away or experienced the great initiation, initiation on August 3, 1983. In the background here, we'll see one of his paintings in this light, um, which is a, in the, on the theme of light, life and love. And many of you recognize at the very heart of it, the Shekinah, the temple of the Rosicrucians. You notice here he's in his advanced ages in his incarnation, but you can sense a boyishness and a sense of adventure and a sense of enjoyment and a, a sense of love for us. Um, and I wanna give you a quote from Nicomendez Gomez. This is translated from his uh, first language, Spanish. He says that love uh, is a total gift in itself without any anticipated uh, calculation or return. It is truly an emanation of God or the divine, and therefore a divine gift. The fact that love is joyous and happy because it is of God's grace. We come into a great harmony, a great peace, and we enjoy true freedom, unquote. You can think of that quote in regard to the uh, paintings we're about, about to see and the great lessons that he'll convey to us. In growing up in uh, Spain and Cartagena, uh, he came from uh, parents that were of uh, humble origins in a socioeconomic way, but he had a very strong attraction to art from early on in his incarnation. And he began his artistic career uh, in Cartagena under the the teachings of a, a painter named, an artist named Andres Barcello. And, and later he would move to uh, Madrid and have uh, study art under uh, various teachers, including Julio Ramirez de Torres. Now, Nicomendez Gomez, you know, is known for his uh, esoteric paintings, including the Cosmic Keyboard, and I'll show you that. You know, the, he had various different stages in his life, and that was a major one towards the later decades of his life. But I also want to show you other forms of artistry that he, he had and give you some resources if you wish to explore more the trajectory of his life. He was a, a military officer as a, a young man. He was involved in the military of Spain, both uh, involved the Navy and the Air Force and areas uh, in uniform. <clears throat> His artistic skills were actually put to use in, in the army. Part of his work uh, was in uh, illustrating posters to do with the history of uh, uh, aviation and things that uh, illustrating manuals and other related publications of the uh, Spanish Air Force. Um, here we see pictured be, beside him, his first wife, Maria Lopez Martinez. They were married on January 2nd, 1927. Um, this was uh, then later, uh, she passed away and he was remarried again to Mathilde Seville, uh, then a widow in uh, September, 1948. I'll say a little bit more about that shortly. Now, um, I think you may be thinking about uh, the time frame that he's growing up in, um, the Spanish Civil War uh, erupted and that, uh, affected his artistic career and his military service. It actually caused him to uh, flee to France in the year 1939 because he fought on the losing side of the Republic. He had a great uh, devotion uh, to his country and he was serving it through uh, the military. But because losing on the side of the war, he had to become a refugee. And uh, he had a very challenging trip. As an officer, he helped uh, lead uh, other um, uh, soldiers um, 
through uh, the Pyrenees and through the mountainous areas to get into uh, um, France. One of the remarkable things he experienced in, uh, on that trip was that they were walking at night and suddenly a car drove up uh, with his others uh, that he was with. The vehicle stopped and a person got up and walked directly to Nikmez and handed him a, uh, a box, a small box. Nikmez thought that uh, you know, it'd be something like chocolates. It was a, something, or like something of uh, food, food in it. And uh, while he was looking at it, uh, and he opened it up, and lo and behold, inside uh, was watercolors for painting. And by the time he looked around, the person and the car were gone. And that made a very deep impression on him, how that happened. And it gave him a great deal of uh, uh, strength and sense of uh, uh, upliftment at a very difficult time while he was leaving being in exile of his beloved Cartagena in Spain. And it also settled in him even more deeply that his purpose in life was to, to be an artist. Even through difficult times of being in refugee camps and restricted movements, he would continue to do his artworks. And he would start to get known uh, by, the, by the French. And he was invited to do exhibitions. And he wouldn't return back until 1957 to Cartagena on a trip, and even later in his life uh, to live there. You know, his, his second wife, uh, Mathilde Sibyl, she was also uh, a widow. Um, they had a very deep affinity to, uh, together. They very much had a, a, a spiritual sharing in their life. And she was an artist as well. And uh, they started up a, a photography um, store and business uh, uh, together. So they shared their personal life, but also their careers together in various ways. And she was French and she helped introduce them to uh, to French culture, but he always remained very strongly orientated towards um, his Spanish culture. And where we're incarnated is a very important part of our mystical lessons. You'll see here the dynamic action of the plane that he's, he's drawn here on a poster for um, on, the, on the history of aviation. And here is showing a person re, uh, repairing a, an airplane. Um, in a very stylized way. He had a traditional training, but he could also simplify it in a more cartoon-like cartoon way as well. Now, one of the uh, um, important parts of his life, uh, in addition to doing cartoons and illustrations for newspapers and some of the cartoons he did showed somewhat like Ripley's Believe It or Not, um, where he showed lives of mystics or other uh, renowned men and women uh, and their lives, and you, you draw pictures of them. He was also greatly drawn to the story of uh, Don Quixote of La Mancha, and uh, which is one of the one of the most beloved stories, the most one well known stories, and uh, being uh, widely translated in in languages, various languages of the world. I know many are familiar with it. Here's the picture, you know, Nicomendes Gomez uh, showing uh, the author Miguel de Cervantes. The book was originally published in two parts from 1605 and 1615. And it was had a special additional significance because Nicomendes Gomez was in a sense exiled in France, a wonderful place to be exiled in, but it was under challenging conditions as well uh, in the refugee camps and, and uh, being adjusted to the new way of life there. He shows here the, the wonderful value of imagination and the stories associated with this great tale. Later, there would be exhibits of his work as showed by his, one of the posters posters here. I want to show you briefly some of his, his, uh, his work as, that was done. And you can think of the watercolors that he got earlier. Here's a depiction uh, of uh, Don Quixote. And it's a, the story is one of adventure and of chivalry and knighthood. And underlying it, you can, it's of great interest to in mystics because it's part of that mystical qu quest of, of knighthood of the grail and the deeper con contacts that we go through in our mission in life. You see here the dynamic action uh, facing uh, the, uh, the, the windmill, the landscape is movement, the various force, forces in the winds that he's uh, um, uh, combating and facing, uh, like the great trials and struggles within our own life. And 
he would uh, go go with. Uh, you see, back here is also depicted his uh, uh, quest that he would go with uh, Sancho Panza's. Uh, here again is showing over a great view of the body of water. It's just lovely to picture this, uh, seeing the rays of the sunlight over the water. The two beloved companions together in their great mission through life. You'll see signed here Gomez from 19. Uh, 54. He found it comforting, you know, to the story of Don Quixote and illustrating illustrating it um, for his original homeland. Later, in his return to uh, his homeland in 1957 and later, one of the very special features of Cartagena and some of the, some of the other cities of Spain is the celebration of Holy Week or the week week associated with Easter. And you'll notice here, Semana Santa or Holy Week. And Holy Week in Cartagena includes processions through the streets uh, during the celebration of Easter. And Nicomendes Gomez did various artworks associated with it. And he was much beloved uh, for that. And he also helped make um, those processions, and those cultures and traditions of Cartagena known in, in, in France. And then become, in a way, it's worldwide known now in part through the works of Nicomendes Guzman's artworks. You notice here a very beautiful sensitive work with the lace and the geometry and the, and the uh, very spiritualized depiction here of the Virgin del Amor Hermoso or the Virgin of Beautiful Love. And she also shows the deep spirituality of the divine feminine and of women. I think it would have been in part inspired by the uh, deep spiritual understanding of his uh, his uh, wife at the time as well. Some more inspiring works that are associated with that period in his life and the, the, the Holy Week. You notice here we see the great initiate, Moses. If the typical iconography that sometimes appears like horns, but the radi radiance of life of this divine master, um, an initiate of of Egypt, and these early sacred texts and the sacred uh, ascent to Mount Sinai that we'll talk about uh, later. Coupled with that is just a depiction of hands. This is a work itself. You know, sacred works of art can use overt spiritual symbolism, but they can also do it in very subtle ways. These, these hands here and these deep uh, lines in them and the beautiful uh, uh, symmetry of the hands and all how expressive our hands here in the lights and shadow the work both in the hands but also in the bearded Moses and his eyes gazing up in a way taking in the, the cosmic and the, and the divine as suggestive of both in within and without in our in ourselves the motion in the of the uh, waves and the uh, beard also suggests the, mo the motion of the uh, emotion and dynamism of uh, our inner spiritual life and inner spiritual most uh, emotions as well. You can see the aura about. Another similar inspiring work is that of uh, the Indivestibles Divinitas Christi, um, San Pablo, or the inexhaustible riches of Christ with St. Paul here. Again, you'll notice the, the aura effect, the very subtle use of, of light that he would learn from various uh, artistic masters, not the least of which are some of the great Spanish masters like El Greco or Valaquez or, uh, or uh, Dali, which he was a close uh, contemporary of. Here, Paul, he is write, writing uh, his sacred text and he was an initiate and experience of the Christ consciousness or the cosmic consciousness as suggested by the title, the inexhaustible riches of Christ. The hands held are joining for the life force to flow through the body. The body. Again, subtle actions in, of the work here with the spiraling motions to suggest the spiritual force in addition to the radiance of the aura, uh, but also the uh, cloak and gar garments suggesting the inner spiritual and human emotion and the deep sense of peace profound. 
an wonderful, wonderful work along these lines as well. I should mention that uh, this work was uh, uh, one of his uh, works that was uh, at the uh, Madrid's uh, Autumn Salon in 1963. And uh, he worked on it for six months and he received a gold medal uh, from, for that uh, Salon exhibition. Another work that he's renowned for is this one of Yeshua, uh, the Christ. It was done in 1973. And you can see his signature in the uh, lower right. The emanations of the aura about this, about this master. Again, the robes suggest the inner spiritual emotion and force, the beautiful, delicate actions uh, of the, uh, in the beard and waving motion there. Uh, suggesting the inner spiritual force and also the cosmic energy. The look in the eyes, um, very peaceful, very loving, very giving. I think you'll find as you look at these works, this, the spiritual force within yourself starts to vibrate like a, two tuning forks. The, in the experiment in physics is one of the equal pitches uh, vibrated nearby. We start to that. In a way, we're journeying into Nicomendes Gomez, his experiences, which he received from the cosmic, and it's drawing us to the cosmic as well. This is a great service that we can do as we attune with the cosmic and, and then emulate it in our own lives, in our own way of living, to inspire others. Another inspiring work here is that of the master Kutumi. Now, immediately, some of you I know may be thinking of the, the image of Kutumi that's in the Rosicrucian Digest. That was, I, I think, uh, an earlier portrait that, uh, not done by Nicomendus Gomez, but helped inspire Nicomendus Gomez to do, to do this work. Now, Kutumi the Illustrious, this uh, work is entitled, uh, was part, as part of the Holy Assemble the, of the Cosmic. And he is known for his various uh, incarnations or reincarnations on earth. For one time, he was known as Tutmos III, the Pharaoh of ancient Egypt, and resided for, for a time by the great baptism initiatory center of Lake Moiris or Moiris. These inspiring figures I've been showing you can assist us too in attaining self-mastery, which is centrally based on following the guidance of the master within and the divine within. I think you'll also, as you look at this work as well, it starts to attune us uh, with the, uh, the cosmic masters, visible and invisible, but ultimately we're drawn back to our own resources and self-mastery and self-reliance to have our own cosmic attune. For the most important master we're always drawn to is the master within and be one with the, the cosmic, which is mysticism. You notice the aura, the eyes, the strength in the lines of the face, the waving hair, the various dynamic action in the garment, all conducive to a very spiritualizing effect in looking upon this work that helps us attune us with Kutumi and the cosmic and the God within all at once. Now here's a picture of Nicomendus Gomez, a little earlier in life than I showed you uh, uh, before, but it's a very beautiful one. And you can see on his continents, a very spiritualized quality, similar to uh, his artworks and portraits. Portraiture was an important part of his livelihood through uh, um, painting, drawing, and photography. And I want to talk some about, uh, in addition to uh, the earlier phases of his work that I talked about with the Holy Week and uh, illustrations and cartoons and uh, the works and illustra illustrations or artworks to do with the great story of Don Quixote. And later in his life, his esoteric works. And here we see a wonderful portrait that I think some of you know before that Nicomendus did of past imperator uh, Ralph M. Lewis another inspired uh, mystic. You can see the beautiful red rose there associated with the, the ancient mystical order of the 
Rosicrucius or Rose Cross, a great sense of vision and a sense of visionary of uh, um, Ralph M. Lewis, um, various subtle features in the face, great an elder of wisdom in our midst. Beside it, we have another Rosicrucian Digest cover, and you get a sense that it's not so uncommon that some of the covers of our publications have his uh, works of art. Here, we have one of his esoteric paintings, the uh, Cathedral of the Soul, which you'll find it has some parallels with the, uh, the design elements of the cosmic keyboard. This is from autumn 1964 from the French language jurisdiction. You see at that time, there was the uh, third European convention. You'll find it here. This is a blow up of the plaque that's actually on, the, on this painting. And you'll see it was uh, given to the order directly to Ralph M. Lewis's imperator in beloved memory of uh, Dr. H. Spencer Lewis, past imperator at the time of that convention. Ultimately, uh, this work of art would come back and be displayed at the uh, Rosicrucian Art Gallery um, that's uh, um, now at uh, the uh, Rosicrucian Egyptian Museum. This is a work of art by Neca Mendes Gomez that's uh, at Rosicrucian Park. So this is one of the special connections of Neca Mendes Gomez uh, with the Rosicrucian Park. In a moment, I'll show you another special uh, connection. But you'll see in the art, artwork itself that there's these ominous clouds here. In a way, Nicomendes is Mendes, for warning humanity. He experienced World War II and, and the Spanish Civil War uh, here, possibly with nuclear clouds with more powerful weaponry. It was in that humanity has the opportunity to do great good, has to use divine gifts uh, for the benefit and welfare of humanity. And you see gradually there's faces in the works of in this work as humanity evolves and you're using colors very subtly as the spiritualization of the of the human up the cosmic keyboard and at the very top there's a dove and there's the divine light coming down the cathedral of the soul was another name for the celestial sanctum so in a way we live this when we did our meditation earlier here we rose up to the cosmic and then descended again and sp helped spiritualize the earth in this inspiring inspiring work uh, that was a centerpiece of a Rosicrucian convention and a wonderful gift um, to the Rosicrucian order. On a related frame, I want to show you a Rosicrucian Digest cover that dates from December 1980. It's entitled The Unity. <clears throat> and in it, you'll find in a way a similar structure again, a dynamic center, and then rising up to it or emanating coming down from it. Let's zoom in a little more close, closely on it for you. And you'll see it has the title, the, the Unity, or just simply Unity, but it also has a, a subtitle that one doesn't hear as much, On Earth as it is in Heaven. And that's from the Lord's Prayer. And this is part of the esoteric interpretation of sacred scriptures, that there's the mirroring of the microcosm and the macrocosm is being expressed uh, by On Earth as it is in Heaven and in this work of art. Nicomendes Gomez uh, mentions that he wanted to portray the one truth emanating from the divine and the creator. You see at this great center point up here. But also has this number symbolism of the number 12, the decad. And you'll notice in here, there's Roman numerals to 10 associated with the Ten Commandments, but you'll see very subtly behind in the background, two great stone tablets, symbolic of the law and of natural and spiritual law and light. And that the 12, of course, is associated with important cycles of the universe, such as the 12 months and the 12 zodiacal signs. We see here two different forms of worship over the ages in different parts of the world. From here, the firing, off, offering a sacrifice, but also down here, buildings of Rosicrucian Park. So we have another special connection with the artwork of Nicomendes Gomez and the Rosicrucian Park and the Rosicrucian Order. I think you'll notice various te great temples of the world uh, in here. His, his artworks in some ways are encyclopedic or compendiums, uh, microcosms of the macrocosms where you can spend time looking and examining, but then also just take some time to meditate on them and then close one's eyes and ascend into the cosmic as associated with these great works of art. You notice the structure again. I want to just take you back briefly again 
to the Cathedral of Seoul. You see the, you see the similarity in the way he's constructed these works of art with the, ray, with the rays of light. They were based on his mystical experience and his ascending into the celestial sanctum. Nicomendes Gomez took pains to uh, describe his esoteric works of art and his work, artworks in general to persons who are members of the Rosicrucian order may be quite familiar with some of the symbolism uh, through the uh, Rosicrucian monographs. But he really liked to take time with people that were not familiar with the Rosicrucian order or mysticism to explain his works, at, particularly at, at exhibits, he would do uh, artist talks. And he was also wonderfully enjoyed when children from classes, from schools would come and he'd be very patient in explaining things to them. And he would, he would, use, he would, he would attune with the persons who were listening to see how they're understanding and, and uh, express things in ways that would be understandable to them, no matter what their age or their background. And children with their great sense of wonder really appealed to, to his work, but just like we have that always when we attune with the cosmic, we have our childlike wonder with us here. Here's he explaining some of his works in an exhibit with some of the officers of the uh, the order present. He had a strong sense of this was part of his mission in life uh, to express these uh, uh, works of art, both in some of his writings, but virtually in presentations, but also in the the medium uh, that that he worked in um, uh, with oil. Um, acrylics and uh, sometimes oil paints and uh, gauche and, and uh, various types of drawings. One of the beautiful culminating works of his esoteric series is on light, life and love tri-pitch. You remember this one in the background of his, his picture there. And these are gauche and, and uh, pen and mixed uh, uh, media uh, on board. Just to give you an idea, this work here is 180 centimeters high by 80, by, uh, 80 centimeters. This one's the same height, 120 centimeters wide. And same height here, but just a little bit wider, 82.5. This is from 1971, 1973, and 1970. But they're in, uh, ultimately are intended as a tri-pitch or three panels uh, together. There's a tremendous wealth of symbolism in, in here associated with life, light, and love. You notice here, with the, the Shekinah, the presence of God in our midst and associated with the divine feminine. You'll see various people and of humanity, sentient beings surrounding in here. So this is the Rosicrucian temple, but also the, temp, the temple of uh, the earth and the temple of the cosmos, rising up to the, asc the uh, ascended master, the master Yeshua, but also emblematic of our own self mastery. And you see again, the dove descending here and here and you notice if you look closely there, it says Liber 777. That's the booklet I'll give you resources to over later if you're not familiar with already. That's the booklet that gives the instructions for the meditation that we did in ascending up into the cosmic. And we see the cosmic keyboard here and the earth and the angelic uh, being or the angelic consciousness rising and descending in the great, great rosy cross with the eye here. We see various ma spiritual masters here as well, associated with the, the pharaohs, such as Tutmos III and Master Ignatan, but also the enlightened one, the, the Buddha, and various works of architect architecture and celestial celestial phenomena. So we have the macrocosm, the microcosm, in a way ourselves portrayed here in our inspiring path through through life. We're going to close short, uh, shortly and we'll have a little, some time to, for some discussion. I wanted in a way to come back where we left off. We have here Nicomendes Gomez in the later years of his life by that inspiring cover of the Rosie, Rosie Cruz magazine, but also more recently the Rose Quad Journal uh, magazine with the Cosmic Keyboard. Mika Mendes Gomez found his mission in life through art. His great work, to use an alchemical term, and service lives on through the inspiration and wisdom his works portray and help awaken within us. In a similar manner, his example is, uni is universal and encourages us in our own mission in life, in our increasing capacity to, to masterfully play 
the keys on the cosmic keyboard to attune with and emulate the cosmic and to be of service to all in the great journey of mystical union. Thank you.